Hello everyone, this is Robert Landau, Live Life Well TV host with yet another episode of a trivia program that's become quite popular here called True or False. I am Robert Landau, Live Life Well TV host. Very good to see you and I've got one absolutely amazing, astoundingly important question to ask you. And that question is this, are you ready for more true or false trivia? I am, so let's go. True or false, Anton Chekhov wrote Uncle Vanya and the Three Sisters. True or false? The answer happens to be true. Next up is this. There are 14 vertebrae in the human spine. True or false? There are 14 vertebrae in the human spine. True or false? The answer to that happens to be false, and here's why. There happen to be no less than 34 vertebrae in the human spine spine. Did you know that you, yes, you have no less than 34 vertebrae in your spine? Wow. <laughs> Next up, is this true or false? Sherlock Holmes first said, elementary, my dear Watson, in The Hound of the Baskervilles. True or false? Sherlock Holmes first said, elementary, my dear Watson, in The Hound of the Baskervilles. What do you think? True, false, true, false, true, false. The answer to that, believe it or not, happens to be false. Sherlock Holmes never said, elementary, my dear Watson. Wherever elementary, my dear Watson, came from, though, it did not originate with Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, but rather, like so many other now familiar aspects of the Holmes legend, with others who kind of extended and embellished the portrait originally drawn by Doyle of Sherlock Holmes, it could have been added kind of along the way, culturally, after the fact. This truly could have come from plays that have been written about Sherlock Holmes and such, but Sir Arthur Conan Doyle never gave Holmes a line like that in works such as The Hound of the Baskervilles. Hmm, interesting. Next up, true or false? Scout was the name of the Lone Ranger's horse. Scout was the name of the Lone Ranger's horse. True or false? That answer happens to be false. What was the name of the Lone Ranger's horse? I'm sure you know. Silver was the name, as in... Hi ho, silver! Everybody, you, say that with me. Hi ho, silver! Very good, very good. I think we woke a couple of people up, huh? <laughs> Next up, true or false, the official language in Zambia is French. True or false? That happens to be false. The official language in Zambia is English. Even though there are no less than seven official vernacular languages in Zambia, and they are, you ready? Let's see if I can get through this. Bemba, Nyanja, Lodzi, Tonga, Luvale, Lunda, and Kaonde. Wait, 
seven. Everybody, repeat after me. No. <laughs> and the latter of those three languages that I just mentioned are spoken in the northwestern province of Zambia only. English is the official language of government there and is used for education, commerce, and law. Next up, true or false. The movie The Godfather was directed by Francis Ford Coppola. The movie The Godfather was directed by Francis Ford Coppola. True or false? Let me hear ya. What do you think? I think he got that right. True. Here, actually, before we continue, are some fun facts that you might not have already known about the famous uh, films called The Godfather, because it was a series of them, sequels too. The film, the original Godfather, was the highest grossing film of 1972 and for a time was the highest grossing film ever made. That is how incredibly popular it was and still continues to be. Have you seen it? Would you believe that I have never seen it? I was cruise directing on ships in those days. Actually, it was even before I went to ships. I wonder why I never saw The Godfather. Huh, interesting, but I bet you might have. Also, did you know that The Godfather is widely regarded as one of the greatest films in world cinema and one of the most influential, especially in the gangster genre. Ugh. Did you know that The Godfather, despite, despite being a best-selling novel, was not a hot property when Paramount Studios decided to make it into a film? In fact, 12 directors turned down the project. 12! Did you know that Al Pacino made just $35,000 starring in the film, uh, the same as uh, James Caan and Diane Keaton? They earned the same, but $1,000 less than Robert Duvall, who also starred in the first Godfather. However, having made runaway hits, Scarecrow and Serpico, after The Godfather, Pacino managed to command no less than $600,000 of a salary for The Godfather Part Two, as well as 10% of a cut of the movie's adjusted gross income. Did you know that there are a host of almost cast stories, actors that were considered for roles of that film but never got them, but perhaps the biggest and most unusual is the one and only Orson Welles. Do you remember Orson Welles? He lobbied so hard to get the part of Don Vito Corleone that he offered to lose a great deal of his vast weight. Remember how big he was towards the end of his career? And he decided to approach the studio and say, hey, I will cut my weight down in order to get that role. Francis Ford Coppola, the director of The Godfather, who happened to have been a huge Orson Welles fan, had to turn him down because Coppola's mind was already fixed and set on Marlon Brando to play that role. A couple more before we get back to true and false. Did you know that Paramount, concerning The Godfather, wanted the movie to appeal to a wider audience, so they hired a violence coach. Yes, they hired a violence coach to help add more blood and guts and bruises to the picture to appeal to people who want more blood and guts and bruises when they go to see the movies. Don't you just love Hollywood? And finally, Marlon Brando wanted to make Don Corleone look like a bulldog. So to that end, he stuffed his cheeks with cotton and wool for his audition for the role. For actual filming, 
he wore a mouthpiece made by a dentist. And this appliance is actually on display in the American Museum of the Moving Image in Queens, New York. I think it is well worth, when things clear up, that you take a trip to Queens, New York to see the mouthpiece that a dentist made for Marlon Brando to make him look like a bulldog when he played the role in The Godfather uh, that's on display in the museum. And when you see it, take a picture of it for me. I'm just fascinated with that. No, I'm not. I'm lying to you. <laughs> anyway, sorry for the detour. I hope you found that little detour interesting, but let's get back to the matters at hand, which happens to be more fun, amazing, astounding, true or false questions. Next up, true or false, Cole Porter composed the musical, Annie Get Your Gun. True or false, Cole Porter composed the musical, Annie Get Your Gun. The answer happens to be false. Irving Berlin composed Annie Get Your Gun. And do you know who originated the role of Annie on Broadway? She is famous for singing, there's no business like show business. You know who I mean. I'm terrible on impressions, but if you guessed Ethel Merman, you are amazing. Because I bet, based on the impression I just gave you, you would have thought I was doing Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> so, the great Ethel Merman, by the way, originated the role of Annie on Broadway in 1946. Do you know who played Annie in the movie version, which you might have seen of that musical? Betty Hutton. And she would go on to play Annie Oakley with Howard Keel, who made his film debut as Frank Butler in the film version of the show. The film came out in 1950. True or false, folks, the Brooklyn Bridge in New York connects Brooklyn with the borough of Queens. True or false, the Brooklyn Bridge in New York, where I'm from, connects Brooklyn with the borough of Queens. What do you think? You think that's true or false? Yeah, I'm talking to you. The answer happens to be false. The Brooklyn Bridge connects the borough of Brooklyn with the borough of, or the Isle, really, of Manhattan. Ha <laughs> ha, that's where I'm from. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty much a true New Yorker, loud, boisterous, mostly unafraid, and sometimes obnoxious. Me, obnoxious? No! <laughs> Next up, Michelangelo designed the uniforms of the Vatican's Swiss, <laughs> Swiss, oh my God, Swiss National Guard. Again, true or false, folks, Michelangelo designed the uniform of the Vatican's Swiss National Guard. True or false, what do you think? That actually happens to be true. That happens to be true. Artists of that time in Italy, amazing, amazing. Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, the list goes on and on. Donatello, love them all. Amazing period in art history. True or false, folks? Sicily, speaking of Italy, is the largest island in the Mediterranean Sea. True or false, Sicily is the largest island in the Mediterranean Sea. That happens to be true, true. True or false, Vilnius is the capital of Lithuania. True or false, Vilnius is the capital of Lithuania. The answer happens to be true, very good, true. True or false, in 1959, Golda Meir became the first female prime minister of Israel. In 1959, Golda Meir became the first female prime minister of Israel. True or false? It's false because it was in 1969 
that Golda Meir became the first female prime minister of Israel. True or false, Buddy Rich was Benny Goodman's most famous drummer in the Benny Goodman Orchestra. True or false, Buddy Rich was Benny Goodman's most famous drummer in the one and only Benny Goodman Orchestra. That answer happens to be false. I bet some of you know who Benny Goodman's prized drummer was. And if you don't, the initials are GK, GK. Gene Krupa, Gene Krupa, who shot to fame and stardom when Benny and his orchestra uh, were playing an amazing, historic, iconic, all jazz concert at New York City's Carnegie Hall. As a matter of fact, that was the first time that uh, music that was not classical music was played at Carnegie Hall. And because it was Benny and his guys, Carnegie Hall sold out that night and there were so many people still clamoring for tickets that they decided to add seats for the general public on the periphery of the stage. So there were audience members sitting on the stage as well as in seats in the theater of Carnegie Hall, as well as I'm sure standing room. There is a CD recording of that momentous concert. It's amazing, but why am I bringing this up? Because when the band was playing Sing, 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 you remember that one, Sing, Sing, Sing? Gene Krupa took an extended drum solo that was so amazing. He improv it, and it was so amazing that he shot to stardom and eventually left Benny to form a band of his own. Gene Krupa was amazing. I'm going to do a lecture on him soon. Uh, so check this channel for that. Uh, true or false? And uh, this next one. Let's see if you get it. True or false, St. Patrick's Day is always in February. <laughs> I think you know that that's false. When is St. Patrick's always in what month? March, March. And with that, we've got two more left for you today. Here's the second to last true or false question for your consideration. True or false? A labologist, a labologist collects butterflies. True or false, a labologist collects butterflies. The answer to that is false, and here's why. A labologist collects beer bottle labels. How about that? I bet nobody knows a labologist, although I'm sure they're around. I'm sure they're around and they proudly display their beer bottle labels. Why? Because they are labologists. And with that, here is my last and final true or false question for you for today. And it goes like this. Ablophobia Ablophobia is the fear of the color blue. True or false? Ablophobia is the fear of the color blue. True or false? Actually, that's false. Ablophobia is the fear of washing. How about that? Anyway, folks, I hope you had a good time. I always do, and I'm very thankful. Why? Because you decided to join me for this episode. With that said and done, I look forward to seeing you on future episodes of not only this show, but all shows here on Live Life Well TV. Why? Because they have been created just for you. So don't only watch this show, time after time, get your activity director, or you take a look at some of the other wonderful shows that are on this channel. They are here for you. And with that said and done, 
Thank you for being here. This has been Robert Landau, Live Life Well TV host. Until next time. And that ain't false. It's true.